Welcome to our candy conversation today. Today I'm joined by Val Grant. Um, Val Grant is a bat researcher and enthusiast. Thanks for joining us this morning, Val. Hey, my pleasure. So how did you get started researching bats? Would you tell us a little bit how you kind of got into that world? What we, uh, what we were doing was we were uh, monitoring the, uh, uh, all the wildlife on the oil shale tracks down in the Uinta Basin in uh, 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 northeastern Utah. Okay. This was before when the oil shale was, they were trying to, to get it developed. Mm -hmm. And we worked down there for 10 years total. And during that time, um, uh, <laughs> somehow or other, <laughs> we talked them into letting us do bat work. So we found this great little pond um, out in Asphalt Wash, which is uh, um, just, just off the edge of the uh, 16 square miles of oil shale track. Mm -hmm. And so we went out there and looked for the bats. So we put up nets and for five years, we went out there every June and August and, uh, and netted bats and uh, released them all and uh, sent them on their way, said hi, and they said hi back. And so we, uh, we got to know a number of species and uh, we had a great time. Yeah, it surprised me how many species you guys actually caught in those mist nets. So I can actually pull up some of those pictures um, okay. you sent me here in just oh, a moment. All right. Let's see. That's putting up the nets. That's your mist nets. Yeah. Is that the pond you were talking about? That's the pond we're talking about, yeah. Beautiful little pond. All right, would you want to run us? Yeah, that's really pretty. All right. Well, and the bats would come into that pond to both feed and drink. Okay, perfect. So how many different species of bats did you catch in those mist nets? Nine different species. Nine different species. Yeah, yeah. That's, I had no idea we had so many different species in Utah. I know a few different species, but. Right, well, I think Actually, down there, this is kind of a little more desert-like uh, habitat and stuff. And but we got a lot uh, well with a, a big riparian area also. Mm -hmm. And um, these guys, who you're looking at right now, the hoary bat. This was this was the biggest bat that we caught. It weighed about 25 grams, and they uh, uh, are about an ounce. <laughs> and these of all the bats are the ones that are probably the toughest little buggers to deal with, as you can see from this picture. <laughs> they didn't like us and yeah. we got to the point we didn't like them <laughs> he doesn't look very happy in this picture i do have to no, say he's not very happy <laughs> that's a large bat now an ounce doesn't seem very big but for a bat that's pretty large it is pretty large yeah yeah i'll show you there's a couple of other large ones we'll see later on there, right, uh, now this this is the this is a hoary bat what we what we did uh, was we would take this bat and weigh him and measure uh, measure their forearms and stuff. Now let me point out something here, okay. because uh, on the wings, as you see the wing coming out, and um, uh, and you will take a look at these long bones stretching out uh, on the wing. Mm -hmm. Now what what that is are those are the bat's hands, just like ours. Yeah. I mean, well, not just like ours, but but right at the top there, them, right at the top is their thumb. And their thumb has got a great big, uh, a, a, well, a really sharp uh, a, a, a toenail, I guess you'd call it. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and like pretty sure. They would, uh, they would use that. Uh, well, and in between the fingers is where the potassium, that's the, the, uh, the skin that's in between the, uh, the fingers there that allows them to have wings. And, you know, when, <laughs> you look at adaptation and evolution and you're going, wow, these guys, no, they didn't just walk on the earth being another mammal. No, but they didn't swim underneath the ocean. No, they, they flew. And uh, it, it is just phenomenal to, uh, to meet a species that, you know, hey, yeah. we're going to take advantage of this and this is what we're going to do. Yeah, they really evolutionarily took advantage of that niche. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it is. And they were great. These are, and this is probably the, I think this was the most abundant bat we had on the, on the, yeah. on the tracks that we caught there. That gives so, you a little bit better idea for size comparison, this picture right here. Yeah, really. All so right. that's probably you wouldn't want to skip this one, me with that cigarette in my mouth. And, yeah. Okay. 
and these these are tree roosting bats. Uh, so you, uh, uh, you they don't in caves or you know in houses or anything like that. They are up in trees, and uh, and they're very they're very uh, they're not social at all. Matter of fact, they don't get along with anything or anybody except during one time, and that's during uh, uh, when the uh, uh, the females, the pregnant females, actually came in one year in June, mm -hmm. and uh, had their young on the at. Uh, um, uh, bore their young on the oil shell tracks. And then what we saw during August that year was all the juveniles were left, all the adults had left again. But what's, what is, what's also interesting is, is that uh, these bats, uh, they would, uh, uh, their mating period uh, is in the late summer in August and into September. And, but the females uh, uh, do not, uh, they hold the sperm for all that period and then release it during the winter, um, become pregnant and then they take off. And this is, this is on there when they migrate from the South um, and come back up, uh, up into uh, the cooler climes and have their young. Yeah, yeah, kind of neat. Yeah, that's the also, the other deal is that you'll fight, we'll fight well. The other deal is that the bats, uh, when they have their young, uh, um, are they all everything is breech burst so that the feet come out first and actually and when the feet do come out they they get a hold of what's that skin in between the the uh, the, um, the fingers on their wings and between their legs um, is what uh, um, they claw put their claws into that and help pull themselves out so the yeah. young bats, young bats learn to work very early. <laughs> work hard to get out of the womb even. Yeah, it's back oh, yeah. to what you yeah. think of most animals that come head first. <clears throat> oh, so very I'm much interested, so. um, I know the bats I've seen are not tree roosting. When I've seen bats, it's usually been inside like attics or barns oh, yes. or in a cave. Right. So how common are tree roosting species? Uh, uh, the, uh, they're not real common. Not, not real as common. common. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, this bat and the next bat you have, I think, is the red bat. Well, let's go ahead and see if I can. Yep, yeah, there's a red yeah, bat. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, the red bat, but that bat is not found here in Utah. That's found in. That's the same species, but they are found in the uh, eastern United States, and, and they are also another tree rooster. And the thing that's really great with them is that when. When uh, and this was back where you know peaches and stuff and this and that were growing, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, people would go in to pick, and they would see this orange thing and pick it, and all of a sudden they had a bat in their hand, which was not a good thing because these guys yeah. are just as ferocious as <laughs> as their cousins. <laughs> I don't imagine when you're expecting a nice peach to come up with a bat, right. <laughs> be yeah, quite the surprise. Going, Whoa. Yeah. Now the other the other bat that's a tree rooster is the uh, vampire bat, but we don't have any vampire bats up here in this country. All right. They're all they further further more subtropical and tropical. Yeah, further south for sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll go on. Ooh, Did you want to talk pallid. about this guy, the pallid bat? Pallid bat. You bet. Pallid bats are just great. Now they're another species that are pretty large, about 19, 19 grams, which is you know less quite less than an ounce. Uh -huh. uh, and these guys are, uh, uh, they're, they're relatively calm. They've got some, also the big ears, uh, the big long ears. ears so that they can, uh, um, uh, they can pick up uh, a lot of insects and stuff flying around. But the pallet bats uh, will also feed on the ground. They will walk on their thumbs and hind legs and hind feet and uh, oh, chase down scorpions and uh, oh, wow. get katydids and uh, yeah, they they're uh, they're pretty tough actually. There's yeah. been some somebody has reported that the hoary bats actually took uh, will take a mouse. Uh, so you're kind of going woo. But yeah, okay. sort of behavior I often think of with bats. You always just think of them Pardon flying me? around and snatching insects out of the air. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you got to watch out for them. <laughs> They'll come sneaking up. <laughs> Nip you on the nip you on the ankle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's another pallet. Yeah, that's another pallet. That's just the look. <laughs> yeah, I don't look very happy. Oh, there he's got 
he's hunting. Okay. Yeah, this is this is really that was a good shot to see uh, uh, to see how the the wings or the fingers. Yeah. yeah, you can see how they're stretched out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's a real good shot on that. And this is one taking a, a scorpion, a pallet yeah. bat. Yeah, just like you said, prone on the ground. Yeah. yeah, it's fascinating behavior I never think of, thinking of bats on the ground hunting down no, prey. No, you really don't. Yeah. That's a, that's a month of roosting pallets. Okay, yeah, and this is where, I guess, where I've seen bats is in the attics and barns just like this. Yes. Yeah, 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 so these guys are... These guys are more house or cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when do bats around here kind of go into their roosts for, for the winter? Are they starting to They're get probably, close? Oh yeah, it's getting close to time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the weather gets cooler then, uh, and all the insects are, uh, are you know slowed down yeah. or absent, that's when they go in and, uh, and go into either the tor or their torpor and mm -hmm. hibernate for the winter. So uh, yeah, yeah. Getting there. <laughs> yeah, you it's bet. going you know, down. Getting there is right. Getting there is right. All right. All right. Now this silver guy, this, this, this is the like silver. This is an old guy with that silver hair. <laughs> there you go. Now these guys don't. Uh, they uh, whereas the two previous uh, breed here uh, in Utah, these guys just pass through. They come from the south, and they head right on up into the boreal forests up in Canada, um, and uh, they don't stay very long. Uh, they're predominantly male as they, when they come through and just scoot right on through here and head on north. Just migrate through get, pretty quickly. Yeah, we don't get to see too many of these. Wow, oh, that's that's probably a treat then when you were able to find one of these guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Yeah, that was it was a lot of fun. This is a, shows one shows one on a tree um, hanging out. Yeah, I'm just hanging out there. Yeah. All right. Oh, that, so that shows you there are a lot more males and females in that guy, just oh, like you said. Very yeah. much, very many more. Fe yeah, females yeah. Are, don't get to see it. Now this dude, uh, <laughs> this Listen is the Thompson's big-eared bat. Now this is the same bat that we have up here in Logan Cave. And that's the one that they tried, they are trying, well, they're trying to protect and that's why they built a gate so people can't go in there anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get asked and, that a lot. People pass and ask me that, why there's bars on the cave now. It's because oh, of yeah. these guys. Yeah, so yeah. these guys are, and you can notice the big ears. Those ears, when you fold them back, go all the way to their tail. Wow. I mean, this, and they are, they are, I think we caught two in the five years that we were trapping. And they, the thing is that they can, they will pick up, they pick up the net. They, they, and they're acrobatic flyers. They do real well. And so the ones with the big ears and, and as you see that, um, uh, that growth in the middle of their ears called the tragus. Yeah. And that's what really helps them in terms of their radar, um, using their radar to uh, pick up insects and stuff. So yeah, these guys are, these guys are real acrobats. Probably the only reason we got uh, the two was that a, a gust of wind came along and blew them into the net. So yeah. got lucky <laughs> on that one. Couldn't fight the wind, huh? So yeah, I'm curious, really, some of yeah. these have those the really large ears like this guy, and, and some don't have such large ears. Um, do the species with larger ears, do they have an advantage with their radar and echolocation over those with the smaller ears? Oh, sure they do. Yeah, yeah, the, they do. Uh, well, I guess to a degree. Now, the bigger, the, the like the hoary bat and the silver-haired, um, and there's another one, the long-legged bat, which you'll see later, um, They what they do is they're straight flyers. They just... They just dive bomb. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just come through in one fell swoop to uh, pick up uh, pick up the insects. Uh, whereas the others will do a lot of hovering and moving and and you know quick movements and stuff to pick up the uh, uh, to go after the insects. So uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, there's there's the different different strokes for different bats. That makes these, sense. Yeah, these, so these guys are making all those sharp turns and and just really maneuverable. Then it sounds like. like Oh boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, they're just, they're phenomenal. Actually, I had, when we were out there trapping one night and I'm, st I'm, st I'm st standing there and all of a sudden a bat comes along and picks, a, picks an insect off my hair. And you're kind of going, whoa. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it was so cool to see, to see that uh, and to feel it. And to realize how, you know, the, the story got told that, oh yeah, well, 
you know, these bats could uh, uh, get caught in people's hair. Well, yes, they could, especially with some of the hairdos that we used to have. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Pile that hair up high, I'm sure. Yeah, really, really. <laughs> so that's I, interesting. Yeah. All right. There's one. There, like, gives you a good size comparison there. Yeah, that's that's the Townsend's big ear, just to give you a good idea of how big those ears are. Yeah, that's, wow. Those are really large ears. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the this is the Raffinescu, which is another relative. They don't live; they're for they're another eastern species. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's another yeah. one of the big ear. One of the another big eared -eared one. Yeah. Long eared bats. Do we have these guys here? Oh yes, we do. Yeah, oh. little long eared long eared myotis. Now these guys are really pretty small. What is it? Point two ounces. Point. Yeah, yeah that's tiny. That is tiny. <laughs> tiny. <laughs> but these uh. So the little myotis are the, are the, well, yeah, we've got some little brown bats, which you'll also take a look at. Those are probably most common here in the valley, but the, the, uh, the long-eared were, uh, uh, that was a special find for us. We didn't think we were going to come up with those. So that was, that was cool. Oh, that is, it's always fun when you find things you don't expect, right? Like these oh, yeah. species. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, there's another, oh, this, this is, is the long -eared. long legged yeah, or long-legged, excuse me, long-legged. Uh, the long-legged bat is just, he's a small-eared, um, also one of those direct flyers. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't catch many of these, but they, they were there. So, Interesting. so that, was, that was a good thing. Awesome. Uh, this All is right. the little brown. These are the this ones I've one heard that, more about. <laughs> pardon me? These are the ones I've heard more about. Are these more common here in the valley? Oh yeah, very common here in the valley. Yeah, and these are all, now everything that you've looked at so far, well, I mean, most of these are, uh, are uh, uh, barn, house roosters, cave roosters, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and these guys definitely are, are use houses and stuff and, uh, and a place like that for their over, either overnight roost or for hibernating. Yeah, I remember finding them a lot when I was little at an old tabernacle where I took dance lessons. That's what I remember about these guys. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got, they're so much fun to watch. They are. Yeah. They're really it fun. It really is cool. Yeah, it's just wonderful. Wonderful. All right. All right. All right. So tell us a little bit about how they take care of the young. That's what, that's well, what this yeah. picture's about. This, this is a mama who's just watching after the young here. Uh -huh. you, you, and it's just amazing. I mean, you, you look at this, this horde of young and each adult gets right back to who their, who their young are. And you're kind of going, well, just goes to show you. It's crazy, <laughs> Maternal, yeah. Parental, uh, yeah, you're just going, well, oh, that's, that's little Joe. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing that they can focus in on which, which young are their own. Oh, it's yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. Cool. So do, so do bachelors just have one young at a time or do they have litters or? Oh, there's usually, uh, usually twins. Twins. Yeah. Twins are you, tw twins are most common. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And this, this is <laughs> that's a cute this, is, this is my favorite. I'll tell you what. This is just <laughs> the the western pipistrelle. As you can see, pretty small little guy. Four and it's teeny. And and point one four ounces. Oh man, which is which essentially is probably for it's from two two to four grams is what they weighed. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, and uh, they don't bite you, you know, they don't try. They're just a calm little dude. And uh, so and the thing is when we would catch them uh, be, with the night air, it would really be uh, 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 cool enough that they would start to go into torpor. And so what we'd have to do is warm them up. So what you do once, you, once we took them out of the net and we got our measurements and stuff, and then we would take them and either put them in a, in a pocket in, on our uh, a shirt pocket or just hold them in our hand like this to just bring them, you know, keep the heat there mm -hmm. and, and get them back to um, working again. Well, one, <coughs> one time my daughter was with us. Well, she was, the kids were with me a number of times, but <laughs> she, uh, she was warming one of them up in her hand. And all of a sudden it got warm enough that it was going, oh yeah, okay. So it crawled out of her hand and then started walking up her arm. And she's going, Dad, Dad, 
what do I do? And I says, oh, come on, just wait, just wait. Don't, don't worry. Just watch what he's doing. And so, and so the pipistro just walked, kept walking right up her arm and came all the way up to her shoulder. And she's looking over at it going, oh, there's a bow on my shoulder. What am I going to, what do I do now? I said, just wait, just hold on, just be calm. And then all of a sudden it just looked around and took off and flew away. What and a she, sweet experience. <laughs> oh, she was just, she loved it after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was such a fun memory. Yeah. Really? I'll just say these little guys are pretty cute. Oh, yeah. Just, she just loved that. Yeah. And these are, as you can see, these are pretty, this was, now, these bats, um, the pipistrels were permanent residents. These were not, uh, these were uh, not a transient like the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the silver haired yeah. or summer residents like most of the others. These guys lived on the tracks all the time, on the oil shale tracks. So they would go into the cracks and rocks and stuff, and that's where they're. That's where they would spend their uh, spend the winters. We also saw them on warm days during the winter. They would come out when there was a few insects flying, and out came the little pipistrels. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, and it was it was really it was neat to see that. That was a uh, Interesting. Yeah. So they yeah. come out of that torpor long enough to catch a few insects. and. Yeah. Well, you can see with the great real big drop in population mm -hmm. uh, there, that's uh, that was when we had a really hard freeze in 1979, I believe. Oh, yeah. And just knocked them, really knocked them back. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That, okay. oh, they, pipple strolls were great fun. Oh, the, yeah. I bet. Also, this is just showing, I guess, your abundance of your different species down there. Yeah, this is this is when their activity, how mm -hmm. how they, uh, uh, what they look like. This is during June. No, I guess. Then we've got August. Okay. Oh, and a picture. Yeah, these these were just yeah yeah. Go ahead. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And their oil shell tracks. <laughs> right. This did is, you this want to talk about so sonar at all? How do they do that? Oh, this is, hey, they, they emit these sounds, or you can sometimes hear a little high-pitched sound from them. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is probably the, the lower level of their, uh, of their, of the sound they make. And what they do is they send that out and it bounces off the, uh, an insect or moth or whatever it is they're going for and directs them into uh, uh, going for it. Now, the other thing is that they do is when they go after an insect, they, um, they don't always get it in their mouth a lot of times what they'll do is trap it in the, uh, in the potassium between their hind legs or mm -hmm. in their wings. And just then they just tuck it into their, into their mouth. Huh. Uh, so they use, they use their whole body to, uh, uh yeah. to get their prey, which is really. Use cool. everything they've got. Oh yeah. You bet. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty thrifty. Yeah. yeah Interesting. Ooh, Ooh, this, this oh, guy, this, this is, this is one of the species that's, uh, I think it's still on the endangered list mm -hmm. uh, in Utah. Oh, it's still on the so. endangered list everywhere. But this is the spotted bat. And we never caught them on the, uh, on the oil shale tracks, but they were, um, they were found just north of us on the uh, Dinosaur National Monument. Okay. And they're, these are uh, pretty much a riparian species. And they, uh, 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 so they're living, living along the rivers the or whatever. And the, the interesting thing is with these bats is that you can hear these. You can hear, you can hear, it's like a, 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 a wire stretched real tight and somebody hits it with a, a, a metal or just like, like almost like a twang. A twang that, down like a guitar string. And they, yes, yeah. And they, as, and they send out that sound to go after the moss or they're, they're almost a strictly moth eating bat. Mm -hmm. And, interesting. and interestingly enough, the uh, uh, the sound that they make is, uh, you know, the bats have those antennae on their on their forehead uh, that they use as a, as a hearing device. And that's that's actually to pick up sounds of the bats so that they can avoid them. Ah. Well, this one, this one and that's high frequency, but this is so low frequency that they don't have that. They don't have that advantage. So they're uh, so the the spotted bat can come right in and and uh, and feed away and just just loves moss just has a wonderful time. <laughs> Great, well, that's yeah, 
moths aren't my favorite, so they can they can eat all they want. <laughs> really? There you can this see the spot. Yeah. And here's the spotted, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful bats. That's, yeah, yeah, just really pretty just animal. Yeah, yeah, pretty coloration. Now these guys, okay, here's the one. Here's the other guy. Now this 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 is the vampire bat. And it's usually this is a with Halloween coming up, you just go, ooh, vampires. Ooh. Yeah, you hear about these guys down in South America. Is that right? Is that where they live? Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> they, they, now these little dudes, well, they're not little, they're 35 grams. So, you know, you over an ounce. Yeah. Uh, well, it's over an ounce until they have a blood feed. And then they can go up, oh, five, 10 grams. Um, and their, their, their stomach, is not a stomach at all. It's just actually a two-way, um, uh, uh, one side just of the stomach, well, the stomach, well, they do have a stomach. The stomach goes all around, circles all the way around the abdomen. So as they drink blood, they just fill that whole thing up. And at the same time, um, the uh, uh, some of the blood goes right into the small intestine and, and starts to digest. Plus the other, the other thing is that with with any with any vampire bat, when because they are taking blood, they have to get rid of all the water. So how do they get rid of the water? They urinate. Go to the and, and that's yeah, go to the bathroom. That's what they have to do. And I've always gotten a kick out of the uh, with the vampire movies and stuff of it. Nobody shows that. Yeah, they, they never show they should, that. They should, right? <laughs> That's as scary as the fact they drink blood. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you can, <laughs> as you can see, you'll see those two teeth of theirs. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't actually bite into something. What they do is scrape, and they'll scrape the skin like they'll. Uh, uh, they we, they would walk onto a back of a cow, and come up to its uh, uh, to its ears, at the back of its ears, and then make a little scrape, and get the blood to flow, and then their tongue. You can see a little groove in the bottom, in their bottom jaw there. Yep, you can. And their, their tongue would come out through that and actually form a funnel. And they would move it really quickly so they would actually form a suction. So they would just suck the blood up mm -hmm. as they, as the, to feed. And, uh, and they also would walk up to uh, cattle and feed, uh, do the same thing right above the hock. Um, and just, you know, just scrape and get a little blood flow and then, uh, and stand there and, uh, and feed. So you've got to watch out. Well, if we were, we, uh, we aren't down there. Uh, so we, don't have to worry. we have to watch out. Yeah. We, we don't have to worry about these guys. <laughs> I think we're not but, there uh, for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. And there's, and there's very few people who have been attacked by the vampire. Uh, yeah. the, the reason, the reason they were, they were, uh, a problem and we were, we were studying them at the, um, in Denver, uh, the reason they were a problem because they do have rabies and they can carry rabies without any effects. So, uh, but they were passing the rabies on to the uh, uh, to the cattle, mm. which is not a good thing to have a cattle a cow no. with rabies. Yeah. Not at all. You don't, you don't want to see that. <laughs> I'm sure not. I'm sure that doesn't make the the ranchers yeah. happy at all. Really, really. So yeah, so that's that's the vampire bat, but we don't have to sweat those. So that's a no, good thing. we don't. But that's it's definitely kind of fun to hear about with Halloween right around the corner because I think I think bats kind of get a bad rap this time of year. It's somehow they became associated with Halloween, and we just have this image that they're that they're kind of scary. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, But the Which more is... I learn about them, the more I, I'm fascinated by them. Their place in the oh, ecosystem. They, and they are. Yeah, they are the most fascinating. Well, I don't know if you can see this uh, bat on my shirt. I can. Yes. Okay, that's that's the ghost bat. Okay. And and that gives you a good look at their hands and also the little bit of a, a thumb. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and uh, uh, but the uh, and get the, well, you go down to the tropics and you go in, you find a lot more species, a lot of different, uh, uh, and I think. I think there's probably a thousand different uh, species of bats that uh, are found in this planet, and they, uh, but they are they, they're the most, you know, most fascinating little mammals that you 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 going, well, you guys do pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, yeah, I love them. I spent some time working in Costa Rica, and we had a, a bat we named Percival that just lived on the bathroom stall wall, just a wooden stall, 
You Is that right? Her. Yeah, so I love Percival. I can't remember. I think he was a white lion bat or something. One of those South American species, but. Oh, that is cool. I have a fondness for bats after Percival. He was our, our little bathroom buddy. But. <laughs> That's great, Michelle. Yeah, it really was. Um, so I do have one more question for you. I, I hear of these rumors and rumblings every time bats come up about the, the white nose syndrome. Do you know anything about um, how that's affected the bats here locally in Utah? Has that impacted our local populations here at all yet? Should they, should they do what now? Should they care? The No, I heard about the, the white nose syndrome, but I haven't really oh, heard oh, much oh, as oh, far oh. as Utah yeah. bats, how it's affected them locally. Is that something we should be concerned about or that's affecting our local populations of bats? I don't think so. I think that's mainly a, an Eastern, uh, an Eastern mm -hmm. disease. And also, you know, I think the conditions back East where it's a lot more, uh, more humid and stuff and this and yeah. that are what what's leading to that. Whereas in the dry, this dry habitat um, or this dry climate, uh, you don't get uh, that, uh, that disease is not here. And if it is, it's relatively, uh, um, uh, well, it's having a, a small impact. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's yeah. good to hear. Yeah. I know I hear about it, I think, mainly east of the Mississippi, as, as you said, where it's really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nasty. It's nasty disease. You bet. Yeah. 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 And that was, that was the other thing. Well, that was uh, another deal, too, is a lot of these bats, especially now the, uh, the vampire bat, well, they're, they, they, they're, they all, everything roosts in flocks or the, or the ones that are hibernating flocks and they all self groom, or I mean, I actually, they groom one another. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, and in so doing, uh, they, uh, the, the rabies gets passed on to individuals. So it's, uh, but at the same time, they really don't suffer from the rabies, but you, you, you know, anybody who's dealing with bats, you just, no matter what the size is or uh, whatever, you don't want to just go and pick one up. Yeah. Unless, unless you know how. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you can, um, if you get them by the nape of the neck, just like you would a cat or a dog, um, that's fine because then you prevent them from being able to bite you or to scratch you with their, uh, um, uh, with their thumbnail. Because that was one of the things that the hoary bats uh, would constantly do, they would send out, they would send out that their wing or their hand with that thumb and just uh, tack it into your finger or your skin, and try to pull your thumb or your finger right into their mouth. Then you're kind of going, "That's not fair, guy. No. That's not fair. I'm not doing that to you. I'm I'm not trying to hurt you." Yeah. <laughs> But they did. Yeah, well, Bob, I don't understand that when you're working with them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't know what you're doing. Um, yeah, that's right. So tell me a little bit, I guess, what do you want folks to take away? Um, I I think it's just fascinating their their place in the ecosystem, the, the good that they really do in, in the ecosystem. Uh, would you mind talking a little bit kind of just about your perspective on that? Of the bats? The bats yeah. place? Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, it's it's a uh, well. The thing is, you when you take a look at all of the uh, uh, when you look look at the system itself, and you see all the different type of uh, of habitats and of conditions that are available, uh, <coughs> we uh, um, and you you look at the well. You take a look at the birds. Now, what was really interesting was. This is we were also when we were working on the bats, we were also doing bird surveys down there mm -hmm. and the population of, of birds, especially like the swallows, the swifts and those who were, you know, who are aerial feeders uh, followed the same route that uh, the bats did. So we I mean, they just tracked one another through the five years we trapped bats. Uh, we did 10 years on the birds, but they during the five years, they were right on right on the same track. So what here here was a, a species or an, actually a, 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 not a family yep. uh, that just decided a family in the mammals that they went hey we're going to take a different tack well mm -hmm. i don't think they decided it that's just, just the way it all worked out but uh uh they there's 
it's to take advantage. I mean, the thing is, what you want to do is find a way that you can uh, feed and 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 uh, uh, shelter yourself. Uh, uh, that and they found a way to do that, and I, I think it's just it's absolutely amazing that uh, they could fit in that well. Now mm -hmm. I realize that you know people get real upset with with the bats and stuff, and um, and. You know, rightfully so. You don't want your uh, your attic filled with bat guano. That's not a good thing. No, uh, it's not. <laughs> but but the bat guano really is good for gardens and stuff. So that's oh, yeah. you know, that's, that's another good. Uses. That's a different deal. But uh, uh, they they have a chance to um, uh, well, they they just fill they fill a niche that is is really quite novel, and the way they did it, I think I you know. The, the, the bass adaptations are just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I just, you know, when we were doing those, I would look at my hands and kind of go, no, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, I could grow webs in between them, and but no, that's still not going to work. Still not going to work. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, yeah, there's, there's a, uh, uh, well, like I say, it, it, it's phenomenal that, and some of the bats, who are, you know, uh, you always picture them as uh, uh, aerial uh, feeders, but there's others who feed on the ground mm -hmm. and, uh, and do quite well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely just a fascinating world, how well they've evolved to just that very unique oh, niche. Hey. Like you said, they're so unique among mammals, for sure. It is, it is. Yeah, and that's and that's the excitement of it. I mean, you just kind of going, wow, this is, this, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, okay. Show me what you can do, and then they do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Then you're really impressed. <laughs> it's really exciting. No, I, I love, absolutely love learning about that. Um, Val, right. thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else you want to share with our viewers before I let you go this morning? Hey, you know, I'm just going to say uh, the uh, the other thing is is that the uh, 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 the, the byword uh, for uh, Stokes Nature Center: stay wild. That's right. Keep, Stay a while. Keep, keep your keep your eyes and ears open on your everything around you. That's the most important part that you're ever going to find in this life. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you know, look at stuff. Not only you know, look at it until you see it, and yeah. and listen until you hear it, and you'll life is just wonderful after that. And see, I'm in. I'm an, I'm an old guy who's still kind of happy. You know, I, what's wrong with that? Well, that's why. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing that 2020 has taught us is just take a step back and observe and listen to oh. nature around us and oh, indeed. how much we can learn. Yeah, and that's it is so cool that people are, you know, now they're watching birds in the backyard. And, okay, it's just great. I mean, you kind of, well, all right. What we yeah. needed was something to slow us down a bit and go, I think so. <laughs> Take a step back. Yeah, exactly. And just stay wild. Look at the, the beautiful earth stay, around us. Stay wild is just, just, just right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, on that note, I will let you go. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see hey. you next time on Candy Conversations, everybody. And stay wild. All right, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, Val.